Welcome to the Spotlight FX studio. I'm happy to have you join us today. My name is Travis Parigi and I'm the founder at Liquid Frameworks. I'm excited to have Matt Dana join us. Matt is the Field FX product manager. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Thank you. Well, today what I thought we would do is walk through a high level overview of one of the most common workflows that we see. So sort of a product overview end to end. There are many different workflows that FieldFX provides support for, as well as many different permutations of each of those workflows. So every customer does things a little bit differently, and that's one of the great uh, features and benefits and one of the real powerful things of FieldFX is its extensibility and its configurability. So today what we're gonna go through is the process of quoting all the way to invoicing and all the things that take place in between. And you'll see various modules that we touch on throughout each one of these components and steps throughout that workflow. So with that, let's start with the very first step, so quoting. So Matt, tell us a little bit about what's involved in quoting and who's involved and what goes yeah. on there. So typically the persona would be a salesperson. So it's just like you would think a customer calls up and says that we have a scope of work that we need your company to perform. Can you put together a quote for that scope of work? What they will do is they'll go into the quoting module within FieldFX. They may or may not utilize CPQ as part of that. But as part of that quoting, they'll be referencing back to a price book. That price book can be uh, customer contract specific, maybe a standard price book, but it's using hierarchical pricing, all the price book infrastructure that we discussed in our complex pricing video. The customer will then go select items, add items to their quote, and generate a document that the customer can then view, or they can make it available through the customer self-service portal so that it can be all electronic. Um, but the customer would then go in, view the quote, sign it, accept it, and it would change the status of that quote from quote in progress to bid one or customer accepted. Once the quote has been accepted by the customer, it would there's a bit of automation that would automatically take that quote and convert it into a job, and this is where S&D would pick up. Okay, so that quote has been automatically converted to a job, and it starts out in a status of, let's say, ready for scheduling or ready for dispatch. At that point, a dispatcher, using the schedule and dispatch module from FieldFX, can go in and see that job and see all the resources that it needs from the perspective of people and equipment, even types of people and types of equipment, along with the time constraints. So not only time constraints of the actual job itself, but maybe time constraints that that equipment can work and that those people can work as well. So with S&D, now that dispatcher is pulling the right people and the right equipment onto that job so that it's staffed up appropriately and from there we can move that job into a status of ready for field work and once it's moved into a status of ready for field work then we transition over into the e-ticketing module at which point a field engineer picks up so yeah. matt you want to tell us a little bit about what happens then yeah typically a field engineer will take his device could be a laptop could be an ipad could be an android tablet He'll, he may be at, his, at a hotel, he may be at his house, he's gonna be somewhere where he is connected and he will receive a notification that he needs to sync up. He's been assigned to a job. He'll sync up his device, he'll receive that job that he's been scheduled for and then he'll go and initiate a new ticket. He'll click the new ticket button, he will go and add items directly from the quote onto his ticket that need to be billed out ultimately on the invoice. He'll track ticket log entries for what took place during the course of the day he will get the signature from the customer. He may fill out some other ancillary forms like job safety analysis forms, but at the end of the day, he's going to get the signature from the customer and all the information is gonna be auto-synced back to back office for approval. Yeah, and drilling deeper into the enrichment of the items part that Matt was talking about, so getting those items onto the ticket, we bring in the CPQ module. Yes. The CPQ module is going to allow that engineer to be able to get the right things on the ticket according to the contract. So all the contract modeling that had been previously done by a contracts administrator to make sure that the right rules and the right conditions are in place, all that's gonna get enforced by the CPQ module inside of the e-ticketing module in both an offline world and an online world. So now we end up with a very contract compliant ticket that can flow easily into the invoicing system and we get paid quickly on. So as Matt was saying, as he's enriching those items, he might be picking up uh, equipment status, equipment condition, whether something was damaged or not. So all that data is getting fed, getting fed back along with the usage data of equipment. And then we pick up things like enterprise asset management. 
where now, Matt, maybe you can tell us about how we can use that data and do yes. things with it. Yeah, so it, depending on the data that's filled out in the field, it, um, the equipment, if it has a preventative maintenance schedule associated with it, that data will be multiplex. It will be pushed on the one side to billing or accounting for billing purposes. On the other side, it will be pushed to the asset management module. And if there's some, if there's some trigger that fires off a work order, then a work order will be created with the intent that a service technician will go in and service that piece of equipment. That's right. And so once we've done all of our maintenance work, uh, that sort of completes the process on the maintenance side, but then there's still the whole operations and financial side of things taking place, and we still need to get that uh, ticket um, into the customer self-service portal, at which point a customer could come in, and maybe it was a ticket from an unmanned well site where Matt wasn't able to get it signed in the field, well, now our customer could come in and they could approve that ticket. They could also see other operational data related to the job that was done, maybe safety information, could be any other data that was collected in the field that our customer chose to expose to their customer through the customer self-service portal. And once we've done that, then ultimately we get to the invoicing stage. And Matt, if you'll yeah. tell the, us about that. The invoicing is typically the last step in the process, at least from a user interaction standpoint. Um, what happens at this point is that someone from accounting will go look at the field tickets and they will, based on the customer and based on the agreement for how they're gonna bill that customer, they'll go into the invoicing module, select a ticket, select multiple tickets, select a subset of a ticket or a subset of multiple tickets and move that onto an invoice, which then gives you an invoice that can be sent to the customer. Ultimately, what this does is it simplifies your integration with your ERP system. Every one of our customers integrates with their ERP system. So in this case, you're doing all your batching as part of FX invoicing. You don't need to say as part of the integration routine that we're going to take these five field tickets with these six items and move them onto one invoice inside of SAP, for example. You take one invoice in field FX, you move it over into SAP, and you get your invoice out of your invoicing system. That's right. So that basically takes us all the way from quoting to invoicing and several things in between. Again, this workflow is characteristic of a very common workflow that we see out there, but it's by no means the only workflow. There are numerous different uh, workflows that we see and permutations of these out there that customers end up employing with FieldFX. And we do have videos for every single one of these in Spotlight FX Studio. And I would certainly encourage you guys to go take a look at those. Uh, they're great learning tools. There are other things like webinars that will take you deeper into each one of these topics as well. So we thank you for joining us to learn more about the FieldFX product suite. And thanks, Matt, for taking the time to explain it as well. Thank you.